Hi everyone, my name is Rafi Khan. I'm a student in the Energy Science, Technology and Policy Master's program and I'm going to be talking about science, technology and innovation policy in the context of transmission planning in the PJM. I'll first introduce my problem and why it needs to be solved. I'll then look into some analysis, namely the Fourier, Prince and Cost-Benefit analysis for my policy options. I'll also look into risk analysis based on a systems graphic and then make concluding remarks followed with a recommendation and a policy memo I intend to send to the concerned authorities. Transmission is the most complex man-made system in the world, providing power to about 125 million homes in the United States, covering 450,000 miles of United States land. Transmission used to be a monopoly business, but over the years have been subject to tight regulation both at the state and federal level. This was done to discourage arbitrage and other cross-functional mechanisms which create a discriminatory environment. The PGM serves 13 states and the District of Columbia and serves 61 million customers. That means one in every five Americans are PGM customers. PGM became a fully functioning ISO in 1996 due to the orders number 888, where the FERC suggested the concept of an independent system operator as one way of existing tight power pools to satisfy the requirement of providing non-discriminatory access to transmission. It in, the PGM introduced markets with bid-based pricing and locational, margin, locational market pricing and was designated an RTO in 2001. Some states in the United States are regulated, whereas some aren't. Some examples of deregulated states are Texas and Pennsylvania, whereas states which are still highly regulated are like Florida or Georgia. The PJM system moves all the way from New York to up to Michigan and Iowa. And you can see the extent of its of the network it reaches out to, all the way up to Kentucky in the south, and even some parts of North Carolina. It is said that the PJM contributes twenty one the PJM network contributes twenty one percent of the United States GDP. Inefficiencies in transmission has been a great, great problem for the PJM. In 2008, congestion costs on account of inefficiencies cost to the PJM $2 billion, though the figure went down to $1.385 billion in 2015, it still remains a significant bill for the PJM. The short-term marginal costs of the PJM have been on the rise. Peaked at $0.14 cents due to Hurricane Sandy, which was an unusual event, However, it still remains at $0.08 cents per kilowatt hour in some cases. Monthly total congestion costs, as you can see, runs into millions of dollars every month. And this is a big issue for the, Amer for the Americans' customers, for the customers the PGM serves. The investment gap for, the tr for transmission is $37 billion, according to the American Society for Civil Engineers. They also rated America's energy infrastructure as D+. Plus lower than some of the other developed countries in the same category. This comes to my policy question. What actions, if any, should the CEO of PGM, Andrew L. Ock, take to reduce inefficiencies in transmission by increasing their budget for technology? My policy options are status quo, investment in smart wire retrofits, and investment in new transmission upgrades. Some of my policy actors are Andrew Ott, CEO of PGM, the President and CEO of NERC, Jerry Colley, the Commissioner of FERC, Norman Bay, Secretary of Energy, Ernest Muniz, CEOs of various utility companies and private citizens, and they all hold different policy positions in this regard. Coming to my 4E analysis, for status quo, it's ineffective to have just letting everything be as is. Though it may be good on efficiency, but in terms of equity and ease of political acceptability, there are big question marks. Customers are footing the bill year after year and aren't seeing the return on their investments. With number of players increasing and congestion becoming a grave issue, management of resources, including transmission, will be a big hurdle. Coming to smart wire retrofits, it's definitely effective. It optimizes the flow of power in a streamlined way based on real-time data. However, in terms of efficiency, I'd give it a negative, simply because the technology is still in nascent stages. People are still trying to understand what it, what it does and why it does what it does. However, in terms of equity and ease of political acceptability, it still scores high. 
Smart wires have been largely deployed in the Kaiser system, one of the most widely successful electric systems in the world. Customers would be required to foot the bill, and this would be required by expanding the technology budget of the PJM. However, there are various tangible and intangible benefits to having smart wire retrofits on the transmission. Coming to new transmission upgrades, they're definitely effective because they would reduce inefficiencies due to the nature of the technology. However, it requires, this requires great investment, so it scores a negative in terms of efficiency. In terms of equity, it scores a net negative because transmission cannot be everywhere. Hence, it may lead to civil unrest in some areas because not everyone wants transmission wires in the backyard. Ease of political acceptability is still a question mark since inefficiencies in the grid have resulted in congestion, increasing costs, and renewable containment is important to address. This needs to be done in a nonpartisan way, which could be a challenge given the political climate. In terms of the trade offs, we see the smart wire retrofit scores high in terms of effectiveness, equity, as, a, as well as ease of political acceptability. But let's move on to a Prince analysis for further information. The probability of support for smart wire retrofits is 68.5%, 10 percentage points higher than transmission upgrades. Due to the nature of the retrofit, there is still a lack of initiative in relation to the position of the topmost authorities in the transmission space. However, due to the benefits this option entails, in contrast to the cause, both tangible and intangible, the probability that this policy will go through is 68%. In terms of cost benefits, status quo has the most benefits. But in terms of net benefits, which includes costs, it's an, it scores negative $15 billion for the public exchequer. Smart wire retrofits brings a lot of tangible and intangible benefits which could be valued at $11 billion, whereas new transmission upgrades would be $1 billion in the positive. Some of these benefits are reduced transmission losses, reduced congestion, reduced contingencies, mitigation of weather and load uncertainties, high integration of renewables, etc. All figures are in NPV, with 2.5% escalation and 8% discounting rate over 40 years of planning. So finally, in terms of costs and benefits, for every dollar spent, SmartWire puts $3.05 back into the PGM's pocket, and $1.45 back in for new transmission upgrades. In, the system, in this system's graphic, we look at some of the things which the PGM will need to look at economics of the policy, regulatory environment, the social climate, and what benefits would the environment have by having this technology installed. Some of these could be a positive, or some of these could be a negative. So conducting a risk analysis would give us shows, would shed some more light. So some of the high probability and most catastrophic events would be failure of the control system due to damaged sensors, unskilled operation, fire, eye landing, or strong winds. And these could lead to lack of service in certain areas, brownouts, and of course, loss of revenue for businesses in the PGM network. So concluding on this part, PGM needs to streamline its budget to incorporate technologies which support lean operation of upstream, midstream, and downstream businesses. The risks associated with sticking to status quo are higher compared to new transmission upgrades and smart wire retrofits. Even though sticking to status quo Benefits are much larger, but the net benefit is the lowest. On the other hand, smart wire retrofits have the highest net benefits compared to the other two policies. In terms of the four E's, there are several question marks if PGM sticks to status quo, but the trade-offs are the least if the retrofit transmission lines in smart wire technology. The likelihood that smart wire retrofits would go through is higher compared to the new transmission upgrades, even though upgrades have historically been part of PGM's long-term planning. Looking at economics, regulatory hurdles, social and environmental factors, the PGM will have to make a decision whether it will divest from traditional practices or look at lean models for operation which promote growth for the communities they serve. So my policy memo is going to be addressed to Andrew Art, the CEO of PJM, and my recommendation is as follows.
Thank you.